Welcome to Warriors.com. I am Jim Barnett sitting down today with Anthony Moore, our third year NBA player. Anthony, it's been quite a transition for you as you come here as an undrafted rookie a couple of years ago. You're hoping to get a chance to make the team, a legitimate chance. You, you make the team, people don't know who you are, and they find out that you've got one great skill, and, and that is shooting. You, you led the NBA in three-point field goal percentage. You followed up your rookie la last year with another double-digit season. Um, I know it was a trying season for us because of all the injuries, but it enabled you to play a lot of minutes, and you got a lot of experience under your belt. Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, it was a blessing coming in to be, able to be in the position I was in this past year. Um, like you said, it was a tough season for us injury-wise. We got bit by the injury bug again, but um, I was blessed enough to get an opportunity to play, and uh, Coach Nelson gave me an opportunity to go out there and show what I could do, and I showed that I improved. Yeah, I look at your numbers, and once again, uh, uh, you're over 45, 46% from three-point range. You end up fifth in the league. You had some big games this year. I know during the month of February, you averaged about for a week or two there, you're nearly 27 points a game. What was the difference for you from your rookie year to your sophomore season as far as a comfort level? Uh, I think it was just knowing where I could get my shot set. Uh, I felt more comfortable playing with my teammates. Um, obviously, Monte's return and, and his impact, you know, I really made it a lot easier for him. He made it a lot easier for me getting in the paint, getting me open shots and things like that. So uh, once I got the feel of him and stuff in the backcourt, I think I got really, really comfortable and those guys trusted me to make shots. The secret was out though that you're a three-point shooter and so you have to work hard to get open because people aren't going to leave you alone. It's a lot like Ray Allen uh, for the Boston Celtics. I know you had that tremendous game where you were six for six from three-point range against New Orleans. Did you have to continually work and develop other skills to, to learn how to get open so that you could contribute and continue to score? Yeah, definitely. Um, guys were running me off the line all the time. Um, I think once guys figured out that I could go off the dribble and make some floaters, make some plays, get some teammates involved and things like that, I think they had to change the way they were guarding me. And I think that opened up a lot of things for guys like Stephen and Monte, Anthony Tolliver, um, you know, al almost everybody on the court. So it was just a good situation for me to be in. I felt like my hard work it, it paid off and I think everybody else is benefiting as well. You know, I was watching you, um, you know, the last couple of years, of course, and watching you today as uh, you were working out. And I'm, I'm always interested in footwork, and it seems like you're working on coming from along the baseline, you know, and particularly coming off a screen, catching, and going right into your shooting motion, moving off, the, rather than be a catch and shoot player, moving off of movement to get your shot off quickly. Is that what you're working on? Yeah, definitely. Just being there, you know, getting my feet down quicker, um, really making my shot, you know, foot-based. You know, my, my feet get down quick, my shot gets off quicker, and guys, you know, will find it a lot more harder to guard me. Um, along with being a catch-and-shoot guy, I got to be able to move without the ball and also score around the basket. So I think it's just a way for me to open my game up, you know, and help the team out even more. I know that uh, you're very conscientious, and I, I've seen you years past. You're one of the hardest working players I've ever seen. Uh, never take anything for granted. But did you take some time off at the end of the season? What did you do? I did. I did take some time off. I took three weeks off. Uh, I usually take two weeks off. Uh, but I took three weeks off to rehab my knee. But um, I really just spent a lot of time with my family. Uh, I spent a lot of time with my daughter. Um, you know, just, you know just, just got caught up on everything that was going on back home in Charlotte and in Atlanta. So uh, it, it was a lot of fun. You know, um, I missed everybody. You know, it was just a relief to be back home after being out here for so long and being on the road so much. So it was a blessing to get home and see my family. And your daughter now, 17 months old, they, they changed very rapidly this yeah. over this last season. Quite different, huh? Yeah, definitely. She's uh, a little more athletic now, so she's climbing up on the, on the sofa, and sofa and diving off in, onto the chair and stuff like that. So uh, I told her she's got to calm down with that. I don't want her to get hurt, but you know, she's having fun. You're sporting the new logo, the Golden State Warriors, with the uh, little bridge on it. What do you think about the new logo? I like it. I like it a lot. Um, it kind of has an old school feel to it, but it's still kind of, you know, a little new school, a little trendy. So I think, you know, the fans are going to like it. I think everybody's going to like it. Now, this is mid-June, so you're, you say you took three weeks off. Um, you're going to go back home again, though, at, at some point and take a little bit of time off. When then do you hit it hard? Um, playing summer league this year? Uh, no, I'm not playing summer league. Yeah, I can league. play summer league. Uh, but, um, I mean, right now I'm hitting hard. I've been, I've been working out now for about a month, so uh, I've been going hard at home. You know, coming out here, I'm going hard here. So uh, when I go back home, I may take a few days, a little light, not off, but just take a little light days, a few light days, and then get back into it again. Do you, uh, you're following obviously the NBA playoffs, but do you, do you watch other games of yourself 
on uh, DVDs at all to see where you might strengthen yourself? Definitely. Um, I watch a lot of games where I didn't shoot as well. I may not have played as well. Mm -hmm. I may have made a lot of mental mistakes and stuff like that just to see where I could improve at. You know, I don't want to watch all the highlights of me doing well. I try to watch games where I need to improve, whether it's defensively, offensively, uh, decision making or whatever it may be. So um, I watch a lot of film with Coach Steve Silas and uh, actually we're going to watch film today. So we're going to watch a little Ray Allen film. And um, I think that helps me out a lot, just confidence-wise, seeing that my shot looks the same, or uh, my footwork looks good, it's just the shot may be a little off, it's just something to tell you, gives you insurance to keep shooting your shot. You can see when you watch Ray Allen in the playoffs, he has to do a lot of moving, a lot of coming off screens to get open. Definitely, man, that's something he's been able to do his whole career. Um, he's one of my favorite players to watch, he's always been since he was at UConn, so it's been, it's been good to watch him. One of the quickest releases I've ever seen Ray Allen has, and I know you're working on that, What's the secret uh, and what's the key to getting a quick release shot? Uh, for me, I think it's my feet. It's my footwork. Um, if I can get my feet square, I feel like, you know, it's an 80 or 90 percent chance I can make the shot. So um, really for me, that's my big thing I'm working on this year uh, in the off season. And if you look at Ray Allen, it's the same thing. Even Kobe Bryant, you know, guys are really fundamentally sound. After two years now, you're a veteran. What's the most difficult thing? in order to have success throughout an 82-game schedule in the NBA. Obviously, if you can stay injury-free, I know middle of the season you missed those 10 games because of that knee. But when, when you are healthy out there, what's the biggest key to have success and what's the, what's the most difficult thing to focus on and, uh, so that you are positive all the time? Uh, faith and rest, main two things. Uh, mm -hmm. I just noticed that you, know, you can't always, you know, um, go out or have fun when you want to. You got to get rest. You know, a lot of, a lot of home games, a lot of away games. So um, it's just something for, that I had to develop mentally, just to, you know, grow up. It didn't take much. You know, I just figured out. You know, I just need to stay in, or you know, um, just need to eat right. Got to eat better. You know, you got to drink fluids, stuff like that. So uh, it's not, it's not hard. It's not that hard of an adjustment, but just being more responsible and conscious of what you need to do. It's a long, grueling season. It takes a lot of mental toughness. Definitely, it definitely does. I mean, I think, I'm thankful that I have good vets around me. Um, Corey McGetty, he's a guy you know, that I pay attention to as far as how he eats and how he carries himself. And I know it's easy to you know, kind of follow after those guys. Well, you're still on the upward climb and uh, bigger and better things for you in year three for you. Yes, sir. Well, nice visiting with you today. Thanks. Once again, warriors.com, check in on all of the latest updates, player interviews, all the information leading up to the draft throughout the off season throughout Summer League as well. We'll see you again on warriors.com.